Hello and welcome to this overview of the Marie Skodowska Curie Actions Postdoctoral Fellowships Call, which is brought to you by the Irish Marie Skodowska Curie Office. The Irish Marie Skodowska Curie Office is supported by the Irish Research Council and jointly operated with the Irish Universities Association. Our mission is to support the research community in Ireland across all sectors and all disciplines in applying to the MSCA calls and implementing MSCA projects. Before proceeding, please note that the information presented within this overview does not supersede the content of the Horizon Europe Marie Skodowska Curie Actions Work Programme for 2023 and 2024, or the supporting proposal templates and guides for applicants. Interested applicants are advised to read the work programme and the associated documents before starting their application. The MSCA Postdoctoral Fellowships funding mechanism supports individual training fellowships to support excellent postdoctoral researchers across all disciplines. And some of the objectives of the postdoctoral fellowships includes to foster excellence through implementation of research projects, to enhance the creative and innovative potential of researchers holding a PhD with a focus on their training and transferable skills and career development, to stimulate international, intersectoral and interdisciplinary mobility, and to bridge and expose researchers to the non-academic sector. The postdoctoral fellowships applications are mono-beneficiary, where the application is jointly prepared by a pre-identified researcher and a host organization in a European member state or a country associated to Horizon Europe. The postdoctoral fellowships call is open to academic and non-academic sectors. It is a bottom-up program, meaning proposals are accepted in all fields of research across all disciplines, and the applicant chooses the topic of their research project. Proposals are submitted to one of eight scientific panels in the evaluation process. Applicants can apply for one of two different types of fellowships under the call. The first is the European Fellowships, where researchers of any nationality can apply for funding to undergo a fellowship of between one to two years in a host organization within a European member state or a country associated to Horizon Europe. The second type is the Global Fellowships. This is open to nationals or long-term residents of European member states or countries associated to Horizon Europe. The fellowship includes an outgoing phase of between one and two years in a third country, followed by a one-year return phase to a host organization within a European member state or a country associated to Horizon Europe. Applicants have the option of including a non-academic placement in their proposal, which would allow for, for additional funding of up to six months at the end of their fellowship. Within the postdoctoral fellowships, researchers can opt to undergo secondments and or a placement to another organization. Optional secondments can be to any sector and to any country worldwide for up to one third of the fellowship duration for European fellowships or up to one third of the outgoing phase of a global fellowship. Within the European fellowships, secondments can take place at any time during the project, whereas in global fellowships, Secondments can only take place during the outgoing phase. They are not permitted in the mandatory return phase to Europe. Um, researchers can opt to uh, go on secondment for up to three months at their European host at the start of their global fellowship. As just mentioned, researchers can also um, opt to include an optional placement within their fellowship. And this is for up to six months in a non-academic European organization at the end of the project. And this is open to both European fellowships and global fellowships. Planned secondments and placements should be included in the proposal and their relevance and quality and added value will be assessed by the evaluators. But applicants should note that they will not be penalized for not including a secondment or a placement period in their fellowship proposal. Specific eligibility conditions apply for both the individual researchers and participating organizations. The beneficiary applying must be a legal entity based within an EU member state or a country associated to Horizon Europe. The beneficiary signs the grant agreement with the European Commission. They employ the researcher and host and supervise them at their premises during the fellowship. 
For Global Fellowships, a host organization in a third country is required to host the researcher for the outgoing phase. This must be a legal entity in a third country and a letter of commitment from that organization must be submitted as part of the proposal. For researchers wanting to undergo a placement, this must be in a non-academic organization, which is different from the main host, and it must be in an EU member state or a country associated to Horizon Europe. For researchers, the eligibility includes the following. European fellowships are open to researchers of any nationality, but global fellowships are only open to nationals or long-term residents of EU member states or countries associated to Horizon Europe. A mobility rule applies to the researcher. This means that the researcher must not have resided or worked or carried out their main activity in the country of the beneficiary for European fellowships or the country of the host organization for the outgoing phase for a global fellowship for more than 12 months in the 36 months before the call deadline. Researchers must be in possession of a PhD by the call deadline. They do not necessarily have to have graduated, but they must have successfully defended their thesis and it must be an unconditional pass with no further corrections or amendments required. Researchers should not have more than eight years full-time equivalent research experience following their PhD in order to be eligible. This is in calendar years, but rather the cumulative time spent conducting research since their PhD. Exceptions apply for career breaks, periods of long-term leave, such as sick leave or maternity or paternity leave, or time spent working in non-research roles. Applicants are advised to consult the Commission's assessment tool included here to determine if they meet this eligibility criterion. And finally, there is a resubmission rule in the postdoctoral fellowships. So researchers who received a score of less than 70% in the previous postdoctoral fellowships call cannot resubmit the same proposal with the same host organization to the following year's call. And we have a couple of examples here for the eligibility. In the first case, an Irish researcher awarded a PhD in 2019 in the UK, who remain, remains resident in the UK, wants to apply for a European fellowship in the field of nanotechnology together with a host organization in Ireland. In this case, the researcher was awarded a PhD before the call deadline. They have less than eight years research experience since being awarded a PhD, and they haven't worked or resided in Ireland for more than 12 months in the previous three years. So in this case, they would be considered eligible for a European fellowship. The second case is where an Indian researcher living in Ireland for the previous three years completed a PhD in 2022 and wants to apply for a global fellowship in the field of psychology with a host organization in France and the outgoing phase in the US. The researcher was awarded a PhD before the call deadline. They have less than eight years research experience since awarded the PhD. They haven't lived or worked for more than 12 months in the US in the previous three years but it's not clear if they meet the criteria for a long-term resident in a European member state or a country associated to Horizon Europe. So there would be a question mark over their eligibility. The MSCA postdoctoral fellowships call follows a prescriptive budget model where the budget is based on unit costs. The budget table shown here is included in the work program and there's additional um, uh, explanation of each category also included in the work program. But in short, there are two categories within the budget for the postdoctoral fellowships. The first includes the contributions for the researchers, such as a living and mobility allowance and possibly a family allowance, depending on your circumstances. The second category is the institutional unit contributions. And this includes uh, contributions for research training and networking costs, and also management and indirect contributions. Note that the researcher allowances are gross amounts and they are subject to employer and employee statutory deductions. Also, a country correction coefficient applies to the living allowance in order to ensure equal treatment and purchasing power parity for all researchers in the program. For Ireland, this coefficient is 119.5%. Proposals to the postdoctoral fellowships are evaluated through a single stage application where proposals are submitted to the European Commission's Funding and Tender Opportunities Portal. The application is composed of two parts, part A and part B. Within part A, this includes all the information related to the applicants, which means the supervisor, the researcher, and the host organization, and also the organizations of the secondment and placement hosts, if relevant. You, the, the applicant is required to answer the call specific questions and complete any fields in part A regarding the eligibility requirements. 
Part B consists of two parts. The first is um, part B1, which is a narrative part composed of, um, uh, the, the part B is, is a narrative composed of two PDF files, part B1 and part B2. And the templates for these are available on the Funding and Tenders Opportunities Portal. In part B1, this is the, the considered the, the core of the proposal and includes the description of the action. There's a maximum of 10 pages allowed for part B1 and any additional pages will be disregarded by the experts. The questions are based around excellence, impact and implementation. Part B2 contains the applicant researcher's CV, information on the host organization, ethical and security information, environmental considerations, and the letter of commitment for global fellowships. A postdoctoral fellowships proposal will be evaluated by experts on the basis of the award criteria, excellence, impact, and implementation. Under excellence, reviewers evaluate the quality and pertinence of the research and innovation objectives, the methodology, including the gender and diversity dimension in the research and uh, open science. The quality of the supervision, training and transfer of knowledge and the quality of the researcher's professional experience and skills are also evaluated under excellence. The proposal is reviewed for the potential impact on the researcher's career perspectives and employability, for the impact from the proposed dissemination, exploitation and communication activities, and the project's potential to deliver scientific, economic and societal impact. Finally, the quality and efficiency of the implementation is evaluated through the work plan, assessing the risks and effort assigned to the work packages and the quality and capacity of the institutions, including the hosting arrangements. Each criterion has a different weighting with excellence accounting for 50% of the final score, impact 30% and implementation 20% and the funding threshold is 70% in order to be considered uh, eligible for funding. To finish, presented here is the call calendar uh, for the next two years. So we've shown here the dates for both the 2023 and the 2024 postdoctoral fellowships call. Finally, a reminder that there are resources.